maybe let's take it back to the beginning. Uh, you said you started playing guitar at a very young age, close to the age of 10. At what point did you sort of find the guys from Tesla and how many sort of groups did you have to go through to find the right mix? Well, that's a cool question. Um, so going back to 1976, I was 10 years old and I played guitar basically in my bedroom with my cousin in my garage and with my cousin and some friends. And then when I was about 12 or 13, um, I started riding my BMX bike around the neighborhood and there was a lot of musicians in our neighborhood, uh, South Sacramento. Um, a lot of kids, like you would ride your bike down the street and there'd be a kid playing drums in his garage. Nice. And um, this one kid I knew played drums and his brothers were older. And um, so I started hanging out with them. And next thing I know, I started hanging out with older kids and going to parties that was, I was 13, 14, 15. And there was 18, 19, 20 year olds having parties and I could hang out with them because I played music. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Especially at so, that age, right? Yeah. So I ran into um, a guy who was Brian Wheat's brother. And Brian Wheat is Tesla's bassist and the co-founding member along with myself. He and I started it. I was 15 and Brian was 18. And when you're that age, that's a big difference, you know, of, For sure. of what's going on in your life. However, I had been, I grew up pretty fast. I had been at parties and doing crazy stuff by the time I was 15. Okay. So I went to a, a jam and I met Brian and he and I hit it off because we're both very super driven and we're not afraid to work. Yeah. When I met Brian, I was 15 years old and I had built my own speaker cabinet because I couldn't afford one. So I built one with a saw and I made a 412 speaker cabinet. I had my own Marshall head that I had saved up for. I had already worked really hard and had my equipment, right? So At when 15. I met Brian, I was blown away by that. Here's this kid who's got all of his equipment together who can really play good and so he fired his other guitar players that he had. He had two or three of them. And he got me in his band. <laughs> nice. <laughs> See, now, I had been playing at parties, but Brian had been playing at bigger parties than these. These He had played at the theater. There was a theater in town that Brian had played at. So for me to join his band was kind of like a step up, you know? For sure. But then he and I started it all over again. And we uh, searched for local musicians around town. We went through a lot of different players, uh, but he and I had the drive and the, the vision of what we wanted to do. Yeah. So we were, we were wanting to play a lot of rock like ACDC Scorpions. And we were huge fans of a band called Y and T. Okay. Yeah. Are you familiar with them? I don't know much of their music, but I've definitely heard of them. They're from San Francisco area. They're like local heroes of ours. Okay. That makes sense. And uh, so we had a band named after a Y&T song. It was called Earthshaker. Okay. And Earthshaker was a rocking band. And then Brian, being the driven guy that he is, and me being driven and uh, playing guitar as a little kid, Brian and I paired up and became a team. And then Brian got a hold of a guy who became our manager. And when I say manager, I'm talking about a burly biker dude. <laughs> okay, there you go. So an old school type of manager. <laughs> yeah. And the burly biker dude and Brian took the tapes that I recorded in the garage to a nightclub. Mm. And played it for the owner of the nightclub who liked it and offered us to play on a Wednesday night. So we started playing this nightclub on a Wednesday night and we had put together a band uh, of people that we knew and for locally in the neighborhood. But we decided at that time though, we couldn't really get, any further being a hard rock band, we had to go a little poppy. So we changed our name to City Kid because this is 1982 and Loverboy was really huge at the time. Right. And in order to play these 
to climb up the ladder, you had to play these more top 40 songs, they used to call them. Mm-hmm. And uh, so a lot of lover boy, a lot of journey, a lot of poppy kind of music. We did that for a very short time. We didn't like it. Hmm. And we met Ronnie Montrose. And we had a couple guys quit the band. We had to find other guys. Until finally we got the lineup that became Tesla on the first album. We changed our name from City Kid uh, to Tesla uh, before we put out that first album. Okay. Um, but basically it was Brian Wheat and myself who went through a bunch of different singers and guitar players and drummers until it became tesla as you know it now and even still to this day it's still me and brian and jeff yeah uh, and it's three out of five original guys 40 years later which is incredibly rare right i mean you know it to, to what do you credit that because you know it's it's definitely something that you know like i say you don't see very much now I credit it to uh, uh, several things. Um, we have a fan base that really loves us and is loyal. Yeah. Uh, after all these years, they still come out and see our shows. We're playing in Las Vegas five nights at a residency. Uh, they fly in to see us. Uh, we still tour and sell tickets because our fans love. The other thing that I'll credit it for is our songs that we wrote. Uh seem to touch those loyal fans in a way where they they love hearing them still after all this time absolutely i mean you guys' fan base is it's the definition of you know a genuine like hard ticket sales hard album sales fan base right and it, it's directly straight from the source right yeah yeah and we have our original lead vocalist jeff keith you know he the guy yeah. that sang songs is still singing them today in the band and with us and uh we're a group and we're a team and uh so uh jeff keith brian wheat and myself the three of us we come the other this is the last and final thing i'll attribute the longevity to yeah is us sticking together is because we're very appreciative and grateful and we know what it's like to have to be starving and to have hard times. Uh, we broke up in the 90s and it was very difficult. We got back together. Um, none of us want to have to go back to that, uh, those hardships. And we came from the ghetto, man. We came from, mm-hmm. we came from uh, very, very uh, poor beginnings, you know. And so we, guys. we value our, what we have um, and what we've built with our songs, you know. 